In this example, I need to sketch an angle theta in standard position such that theta has the least possible positive measure and the point negative 6, 8 is on the terminal side of theta. Then I need to find the exact values of the six trig functions for theta. So remembering an angle is in standard position when the vertex is at the origin, the initial side is along the positive x-axis, and I need a positive angle so I'm going to rotate in a counterclockwise direction. I also know the point negative 6, 8 is on the terminal side. So plotting that point starting at the origin, x is negative 6, go left 6, y equals positive 8, go up 8. Here's the point on the terminal side. Now I can graph in the terminal side starting at the origin and going through my point and then put an arrow on the end of the terminal side. Now there are an infinite number of angles that have this as the initial side and this as the terminal side, but I need the least possible positive measure. So that means my angle theta is just going to look like this. It's going to start on the positive x-axis, and rotate just until I get to the terminal side. So there is angle theta. Next, I need to find the exact values of the six trig functions for theta. So I'm going to need to know the values of x, y, and r for this point here. Remember, x was negative 6, y is positive 8. I need to find r. We can do that using the Pythagorean theorem. r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So r squared equals x is negative 6 all squared plus y is 8, so that's 8 squared. Negative 6 all squared is positive 36 plus 8 squared is 64. So I know r squared equals 36 plus 64 equals 100. So r, remember r is always positive, so it's the positive square root of 100, which is positive 10. So now I know x, y, and r. I can find the exact values of all six trig functions. I'm going to start by finding the sine of theta. Defined in terms of x, y, and r, that's y over r. y is 8, r is 10. Both of those reduced by 2. 2 goes into 8 4 times, 2 goes into 10 5 times. So I know that the sine of theta equals 4 fifths. And I'm immediately going to find the reciprocal function of the sine function, so that's the cosecant function. We know is 1 over the sine function. So all I have to do is take the reciprocal of the sine function, while well, the reciprocal of 4 fifths is 5 fourths. So that is the value of the cosecant of theta. Next, I'm going to find the cosine of theta, which in terms of x, y, and r is x over r. x in this case is negative 6. r is 10. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. Both of these reduce by 2. 2 goes into 6 3 times. 2 goes into 10 5 times. So I know that the cosine of theta excuse my bad handwriting, is negative 3 fifths. And the reciprocal of the cosine function is the secant function. So the secant of theta is 1 divided by the cosine of theta. So it's just the reciprocal of negative 3 fifths, which is negative 5 thirds. And that equals the secant of theta. 
And now I have to find the tangent of theta and its reciprocal. So the tangent of theta in terms of x, y, and r is y over x. y is 8. x is negative 6. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. Both of these divide by 2. 2 goes into 8 4 times. 2 goes into 6 3 times. So the tangent of theta is negative 4 thirds. And the reciprocal of the tangent function is the cotangent function. So the cotangent of theta is 1 divided by the tangent of theta. So it's going to be the reciprocal of this fraction. Flip it upside down, you get negative 3 fourths. So that is the value of the cotangent of theta is negative 3 fourths. So I found the exact value of all six trig functions for my angle theta.